While many growers will tell you how to root cuttings successfully, very rarely do you see anyone that relates it to scientific published research. And hopefully you've come here to Debaco University for just that. And that's what we intend to provide here of the rooting success rate of cannabis cuttings research to give you the best methods to increase your odds of success at rooting new clones or vegetative cuttings from a cannabis plant. All right, let's get into the video here. So first off, here is the article. If you want to find a little bit more details or information, uh, we're gonna provide you here with kind of some, uh, a brief overview of this particular article in this video lecture. So first off, realize that there's many variables here. Growers often wonder what the impact would be of different rooting conditions. If conditions are favorable, there would be very likely to be some degree of rooting. However, the goal for growers is to maximize the production. That's the whole intention here, is to do some, show you some comparisons, but show you how to maximize your rooting potential there in your cannabis clones. So first off, looking at cannabis plant material and factors explained, and this is again, part of that study. So cannabis was actually used as part of the study, so it's always hard to find that. Let's try to provide you here. Cuttings were taken at the length of about 13 centimeters with three fully expanded leaves from stock plants. Cuttings were taken at the ends of axillary limbs and cut at a 45 degree angle. Each cutting was rooted in a 5.7 centimeter wide, 5.7 centimeter tall, peat-based jiffy pot containing promix, a PG, organic growing substrate. So again, this gives you just some background for this study. Full factorial, complete randomized uh, design with four factors, rooting hormone, leaf number, cutting position, and leaf tip removal, two levels per factor, and 10 replications per factor combined. So this was a pretty extensive study that really touched on many of the things you hear growers say. Should I cut the leaves, not cut the leaves? Um, how many leaves should I have? This study gets into that. For leaf number, cuttings either had one fully expanded leaf removed, uh, two leaves remaining, or were left with three total leaves. For cutting position, cuttings from terminal shoots were taken from either an apical position, basically node 10 or higher on the plant, or from what was determined to be a basal position, which is below node 10 on the plant. For leaf tip removal treatment, the portion of the leaf tips, about one third of the leaf area, was removed from full expanded leaves or the leaves were left uncut. And lastly, for the rooting hormone factor, we're looking at the base, about five centimeters of each stem was dipped into either 0.2% um, endol 3 butyric acid gel or in 0-2% willow extract rooting gel for another source of comparison. So again, these are probably some things you've heard from a lot of growers. Let's look at some of the data provided to get into what the results showed for this study. So it's also important to understand the propagation environment. So this can also play a large factor into your um, cloning and rooting success. So trays were randomly arranged in a walk-in a growth chamber and initially misted. Relative humidity in the first zero to four days was 95%. From five to eight days, that was reduced to 80%. And for nine to 12 days, that was reduced further to 60%. Temperature was maintained about four, 24 degrees Celsius for day and night for the entire period. Fluorescent lighting was used to maintain an 18 hour photo period. And the light intensity was slowly increased. Uh, the PAR readings from that zero to five days again at 50 uh, micromoles, uh, uh, six, day six to day nine, 80, and day 10 to day 12, 115, a PAR reading of those micromoles in meters per second uh, to give you an idea of the conditions. The harvest determination, so the bottom of the trays was observed uh, daily from seven uh, days after uh, and onwards for protruding roots and cuttings were harvested at uh, 12 days when approximately 50% um, or more of the cuttings showed visible roots at the bottom of the tray. So again, these are some of the parameters that were set forth for the experiment and the results then are based off this. So the rooting assessment, you know, looking at how well those plants may have rooted or may not have rooted. Well, successful rooted cuttings were assigned to either two classifications based on the degree of advantageous roots. A root quality index, abbreviated in this study RQI, score of one or two was assigned by a third party without knowledge of applied treatments based on visual reference. That's the top image right here. So here's a one and here's a two. Before, before RQI measurements, the substrate was washed and rude cuttings with RO water to again allow for good visual inspection because that's how the roots were assessed visually and that's how the study was conducted. 
rooting success rate of cannabis uh, cuttings. So if we look start at some of the data here, the rooting success rate of cannabis cuttings with uh, about 80 cuttings looked at here. The cut leaves had about one third of leaf tips removed to give you an idea. Cuttings from terminal shoots, either April cuttings, again, greater than no 10 and basal cuttings uh, less than no 10. And those April cuttings are equal to or greater than no 10. Rooting hormones, there's a synthetic hormone um, or an organic hormone, which is willow based. Bars within each factor bearing different letters are significantly different at uh, P less than 0 0.05 using chi-squared contrast. So measured in a binomial scale in which any visible advantageous root formation was considered rooted to calculate as percentage of cuttings with roots in each treatment. So what does this background say about the data provided right below me? Well, we can notice if we look at the leaf number, whether you use two leaves or three leaves, statistically there was no difference between those. Whether using a basal cutting or an apical cutting, again, no statistic difference uh, between those. However, with cutting the tips or not cutting the leaf tips, there was a significant difference. And to get the increased rooting success, it is suggested here by the data to not cut the leaves there. In addition to whether applying the organic or the synthetic rooting hormone, in this case, the synthetic hormone definitely had a much greater rooting success than the organic one. So again, leaf number, where you took the cuttings from, not major difference, uh, at least statistically based on this study. Uncutting the leaves and using synthetic hormone definitely did make a statistically difference, uh, improve, improvement in rooting success. We're looking at the root quality index of the cutting. So again, 80 were used. The, looking at the cut and the uncut leaves here. Um, we're looking at the bars within each factor being different letters, significantly different at P less than 0 0.05 using chi-square contrast. We can see the, again, same basic pattern here. We're looking at leaf number and synthetic pattern here, providing definitely the greatest difference there. Rooting success rate, so where we're looking at where we took those cuttings, this is like a, a number of 40 um, individual plants here. Cut leaves had about one third of leaf tips removed. Cuttings from the terminal sh um, shoots, again, the apical equal to or greater than node 10. Basal cuttings uh, less or under node 10. And again, the same uh, statistical analysis applied there. And here we see the example of looking at the basal or apical um, here, shoot tips, looking at whether you cut or uncut the leaves as if the leaves were cut. In this case, if you do cut the tips of the leaves, the apical um, area did show an improvement in rooting success. However, if you leave them uncut, it doesn't matter where you take them from. Statistically, there is no difference in the rooting success rate. So what's the research summary here? What have we learned from looking at all this data and how can we apply that to our own uh, potential cannabis clones? Well, rooting hormone of 0.2% IBA gel delivered higher rooting success rate than the 0.2% will extract, so that would be advised to use. Cutting 30% of the leaf tips reduced rooting success rate, so it is not advised that you cut those uh, leaf tips. Number of leaves, three leaves had a higher root quality compared to two leaves without influencing rooting success rate. And the position of cutting on the stock plant did not influence either rooting success rate or the root quality. And you might want to go back to some of the previous slides or pause the video to look at those um, charts presented in a little bit more detail yourself. Uh, but lastly, to maximize rooting success, what's the quick general summary here? We want to take plant material from either the apical or basal positions. That doesn't matter. You want to make sure the cuttings have at least three fully expanded leaves. You do not want to cut the tips of the leaves off at any point. That will, again, reduce your rooting success. You want to dip the cuttings in IBA rooting hormone to help increase your um, and maximize your rooting success and quality cuttings that you can produce. And here it is supported with scientific research doing uh, comparisons between different methods growers may use. And hopefully you found this helpful and it will improve your rooting success on the clones that you take.